Hello and welcome back. We continue our discussion with Craig Isherwood in regard to Syria and the current problems with Syria. So we stop there. The British created the situation and stabilizing the whole Middle East and profiting from it. I don't know how much and how, but that's the sort of game they're playing in the past how many years now? Almost oh, 100 the, years. The British have always done this. It's the divide and conquer rule, right? You break up countries into yes. small parts. You partition them. You, you Then you create spheres of influence. You propagate... Support. And you got the Commonwealth. And you got the Commonwealth. The 54 strong countries. Yeah, but there's still another... And you're proud of it. And the Queen is just saying goodbye to Commonwealth now. And little prince is coming. We live in the Commonwealth and you never hear much about the other 130 countries. And that's another very important <laughs> point. Because look... Syria is very closely aligned with Russia. And Russia yes. is a country, like China in particular, that's never been conquered as a nation. They're a very no. proud nation. They support a principle called sovereignty. Even the French tried that. Well, they tried. And they the failed. Germans. In World War II, they failed, right? Interestingly enough, the British never tried Russia on. No, but they did, they did support <laughs> the wars. They, they created the wars to try them on. Yes, that's yeah. very true, yes. So, what you've got with Russia is yeah. you have a different grouping, Tibor, in the world today. You have a different polarity, like in the sense of what, what's called the BRICS countries. Yep. Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. Now, this grouping, as you never hear about much in the Western press at all, is, div is joined together around this idea of supporting sovereignty of its people. Now, that's not what we're used to in Australia. We're used and to autonomy. economic sovereignty as well. Uh, yeah, economic sovereignty, but sovereignty in general. We're autonomous here. We're given a certain number of powers. Back in the you know, 1901, we were given a constitution by the British. We were given our constitution. We didn't have to fight for it. So we were, we, we were given a degree of limited autonomy, which is what happens in the Commonwealth amongst the Commonwealth nations. At the end of the day, we still have to sit on the Queen's lap as a head of state. We haven't got our own head of state. We're not, we're not uh, separate from no. the British Are we Empire. spanked by the Queen? Sorry? Are we spanked by the Queen? We're spanked by the Queen's agents, which is the mm. City of London, okay. right? Banking system. In That's particular. worse than the Queen's hand. Well, I we think. go. We write a lot about this, uh, Tibor, because you have to understand the City of London is basically a square mile, which is a separate nation than Britain. Completely independent. Completely yes. independent. Different rules, different laws, the whole works. People don't understand that. How could you have a separate, you know, city of London city inside, in the, city. inside yes, the city? In the, well, in the whole country, matter of fact. That's yes. the way it works. So what you've got is this principle of sovereignty amongst the BRICS countries. And this idea of economic sovereignty you're talking about it means that the countries that are, are working hard amongst themselves to develop bilateral and multilateral relationships in order to develop the economies for their people. That irritates the British a little bit in the city. Sorry? It irritates the British a little oh, bit. Oh, of course in the it city. does, because this means that there's a, <laughs> their system, their financial it's not system, needed. which is falling down, yeah. and we've seen the global financial crisis, it hasn't been remedied at all. Yeah. In fact, it's got worse, and no doubt we'll hear more about this on your program. But the Russians are a very proud nation, and so they should be. They've never been conquered, as has China, never been conquered as a nation. So the British know this, right? And Vladimir Putin is a very popular leader because he came into power in the 1990s and he turned around the economic warfare launched by the British, Mont Pelerin Society to be precise, yes. and, which was literally killing Russian people. Now, the, the Russian people have a long memory uh, of what was done to them and that's why Putin is such a uh, popular leader and just got re-elected. Now, the British hate this because he's a strong leader. You know, Bashar al-Assad in Syria is a strong leader because they represent the interests of their country. But again, you'll never hear this in the Western press inside our country because we don't, the, the, the City of London, the Crown and others control the international media. And control the money as well. That's media where... control is, mm, yeah, money control is a big thing. Yes. And the United States has got the dollar, which is also a way of money controlling. And, and come back to what we're talking about with Trump. He had the impulse to work with Russia. Now, if you have an alliance between the two greatest superpowers in the world for peace, that would overturn the paradigm that we've had for the last 60, 70, 80 years. I mean, there was an impulse for Roosevelt to work with Stalin, 
right in the post-war period. Unfortunately, they didn't come about because Roosevelt died. No, before right, unfortunately, that, Unfortunately, yes. before that happened. Roosevelt had a plan to get rid of all the British colonies, which infuriated Churchill. So the empire would have been dissolved at that point, but unfortunately, the tragedy of history is it didn't happen. Now, I had the opportunity of travelling to Russia in 2015 to participate yep. in the uh, BRICS civic That's forum. since you are a Russian agent. That's why they say that. I mean, anyone that agrees... Just to listen. Anyone that agrees with, <laughs> uh, you know, the fact that Russia should have the, the right to be and a And even nation. invited some ambassador into one of your events. We had, uh, yes. The Russian ambassador yes, in Australia. Yes, we had a speaker. Uh, that Unspeakable. You should yeah, not do that. You no, you couldn't. In, no. in a country that <laughs> prides free speech, you know, Tibor, that... <laughs> Some people might say there's a bit on the edge. I mean, it's absurd that we're called Russian agents because we're supporting the same principle. That's what I would have been invited to participate yeah. in this forum if we didn't, if we weren't recognised as supporting this principle of sovereignty and a, and a real need for economic development. In fact, our as a political party, our policy is peace through economic development. So that's we don't. Nice, that's a nice dream, I have to say. But jump back to Syria a bit if we can. Mm -hmm. So. You know, that family, the Arasad family, is not, he's not the first one who ruled the country. No. It was father before. Mm -hmm. And the father fingered the French. Yes. So I mean, probably that's why the French don't like <laughs> that country anymore, because well, they're being the last colonizers of the, the country. The French are always... Until the 60s of 1960s. The French are always the poor cousins to the British. Yeah. And always have been through history. I mean... Yeah, if you want to see what the French were up to, have a look what the British were up to. Yeah. Right. So the Sykes-Picot Agreement, as you know, back in the 20s and the 30s, balkanized, carved up the Middle East, and Syria was, and Lebanon were both part of French influence. Why is that? But don't know. Assad's father yeah. kicked the French out, and they became a sovereign country. Right. Now, when you you have to people don't really understand the nature of the the leaders in these. Middle Eastern countries, where you're dealing with many different religions, particularly Islam and other religions, it requires strong leadership top down to control and to run those countries. And if it was run very successfully. If you try and run it in, in terms of democracies, they just don't work. It's been run very successfully, as you said. I mean, Saddam Hussein, and we have uh, you know, members of our staff here who came, fled actually the Iraq wars in 1990. Saddam Hussein created a secular state where Muslims and Christians and others would live side by side. Now, he made some silly mistakes, which we actually, in our international organisation, warned him about in the 1990s, and it's not to yeah. fall for the British trap. Give them an excuse to come after you. And now he ignored us. And he is what completely... And look what happened in Libya. Disappeared in the trap, yes. We, you know, the fact so the regime changes. All, we know all these. It's nice manipulation. It's happened, and the whole thing is in the chaos. Since the Americans and the British, just lately, just this month, you know, they got this chemical attack excuse to bomb Syria. Again, it's it's targeted at Russia. Yes. We go back to Why? the Skripal affair in Salisbury only what several weeks ago now, where they accused Russia of supplying or you know killing or trying to kill these people using a so-called nerve agent that can only be produced in Russia. No, well, that's 20 other, other different labs produce that of one. Of course. And it's got well, some 48 different version of it, so that's just stupid. That's right. But see, the intention is to vilify Russia again. And then they've got, you know, sanctions came out and you had, what, 28 countries <laughs> with, had this, you know, withdrawing their ambassadors or, you know, kicking out Russia. Hooray, hooray, yes. But just remember, there's 178 countries 28 of them responded. What about the other 140 odd? Right. But See, the Russia has is, is because of the European Union. Well, that's that's <laughs> one aspect of it. But the fact is, you have other countries that have got very close. Not all the members of the European Union. We have to say, not all the members. Yes. Yeah, New Zealand had the sense to stay right out of it. You know, the new Premier Prime Minister over there said, oh, "We don't have anything to do with this." You know, we had a look around at our um, our Russian representatives down here, and we didn't discover any spies. So therefore, we're not kicking <laughs> any out, which is which is the nature of what you're dealing with. The intention is to vilify Russia, to isolate it, but to stop it from having any real collaboration with Donald Trump because Donald Trump came in as a wild card. He came in with the support of the people in the United States not to go into these wars. That seems to me now nah, he's under the control, under the thumb of some machinery, something, you know. Uh, we've the got war, the great American 
industrial war machinery is just get him. Well, you've got an enormous get, uh, get Trump operation inside the United States, particularly amongst what they call the neoconservative factions, you know, the, uh, the Nikki Haley's. And now, unfortunately, he's brought this guy, John Bolton, in who's not going to be a terribly useful fellow for Trump that, because he's always been promoting wars. And this last war, they wanted, this last bombing raid, they wanted to see more bombing done, much more extensive bombing done than what was already done. They done the bombing, but they unfortunately bombed some of the objects which are already certified not producing any chemicals and not even in the bloody list. And this certification came from the United Nations, independent yes. observers. So what's going on? Well, Trump was could be if if you got three countries, you know, could be that silly to 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 present something for the world when it's not standing the pub well, test? I think you have to come not back... Not passing the pub test? Can you do that? I think you have to come to, back to the personality of Trump himself. Right? Yes. He's got a very large ego and always wants to be seen to be in control. Right? That's, that's the nature of the man. Yeah. And he's been under enormous pressure lately. When you have this, pros, this um, uh, adult... Film entertainer, entertainer, Is she not a prostitute, not no. a prostitute. Yeah, no, no, no. no. She's you know, a coming out with all She's these allegations, and then you also had the fact that his offices were raided to get material to try and prove the case. Now you have to ask the question: Well, what's this got to do with anything? But it's got to do with targeting Trump <laughs> because morally so he's not stabilized. He is morally not fit to be a president. Well, that's what they're saying. Yeah, of course. Right, but you go back. But they never say that for Clinton. Or or George Bill, Bush, or B George Billy, Billy, Bush. Billy can fuck whoever he liked to, and there's no criticism. Well, exactly. I because mean, he done as a return for the freedom of him, whatever they ask from him. Yes. So that's a sort of trade. But Trump's got a resistance factor, and he came in with the intention of having good relations with Putin. And, he, and look, he even had he even invited Putin to the to the White House about a month ago. Yes. So the intention was that is intention. Getting so into real discussion. The British that actually lied about all the wars for Iraq and for Syria and so forth. They are the ones putting that pressure on That was Tony, on not the British. It was Tony, not the British. Well, Tony Blair, representing Tony Blair. a faction of the British. I'm not talking about the British people as a whole, <laughs> Tibor. And I think what also is this, is this can all backfire. So it's not yeah. all, you know, looking into a dark night. The fact is you have Jeremy Corbyn in the United Kingdom and he's going to be the next... He's the leader minister. of the opposition. Yeah, he's the leader Minister's of the opposition in the moment, and he's going to be the next Prime Minister of Britain if they don't kill him. Because he represents the complete opposite of this current faction that Theresa May represents. And he opposes... And he's asking Rockwell. questions. He's asking questions. This guy is asking questions and, and asking for proof as well. Exactly. Unheard. Unheard. And the current... Not like polls. in here in our parliament, you know. The Labour, you know, what's her name? Penny Wong. Penny Wong. Yeah. She's just... <laughs> like a fish, you know? <laughs> what the hell she is doing? I mean, there's no brain? No one got brain in this country from the Tibor, politicians? I don't know. To the defence of yes. some of the politicians that are in our parliament, there are some good ones in there. I don't say that, they're not. But I'm saying is, you know, when you got a reaction like that on television, you yeah. know, you don't know it, where it does, are you it leading. It does make people a bit despondent that who's actually leading our country. But we always encourage our members to talk to the local MPs to make sure that our material politically gets in because as you can hear from this discussion we talk about different issues in the mainstream press yeah and our politicians need to know this stuff they need to know an alternate point of view they might rubbish it but listen history is going to be history and we'll stand a test of history as we go along Craig thank you very much for this little discussion on some of the world issues and on Syria I hope you enjoyed it and see you next week, same channel, same time. Have your say.